Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Sunderland Board of uh, or the Select Board in this town of Sunderland. I forget how long we've been doing the COVID thing, but we're we're almost ready to get things exactly right so we can start on time. So we must be nearing the end of COVID. Yeah, exactly. So Wouldn't that be nice? I would say that uh, knowing that we're in good we're in good steed. First up, a minute from uh, September thirteenth. Motion we approve the minutes. Uh, second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of September thirteenth as presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have three zero on that. Next order of business is under new business. You all set back there? I hope so. <laughs> Next order of business, we have the appointment of Emmeline Martin as animal control officer. Chief? What do you got on that? So we have Emmy on the call as well, but uh, I wanted to come in today to, to let the board know that we did hold interviews, uh, Jack, myself, and, and the Board of Health, uh, and based upon the information gathered at the interviews and background checks, we've decided to uh, also offer Emmy the position of Animal Control Officer. Uh, I know that based upon some of the information that we've already been able to get uh, regarding uh, what's needed for the certification. Emmy has even gone as far as registering for the next class in Northampton, which is October. So, so what has to happen now, Chief? Well, it so just, ACO, just a one class? Well, no, an ACO has to have, uh, I believe it's 14 hours, but this is going to be a 16 hour course. Okay. So 16 hours for initial certification yep. and maintain eight hours every year. Okay. Okay. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself to him? Hi, my name is Emmy. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. We're we're used we're used to it now. Yeah, almost. So, would you like to introduce yourself okay. to to everybody well, in town? Yeah. Uh, my name is Emmy, and I have accepted the position, hopefully as the animal control officer for the town of Sunderland. Um, I currently work as a dispatcher full time, but I'm happy to take this new position on. Good. Okay, David or uh, Crystal, any questions? I'm all set, thank you. No, I think I'm good. That's off the top of my head. So you told her it's a very well paid position, Chief? Yeah. That, so people, to, that people fight for this job? I tried yeah. to, and Jeff kept telling me to, to stop talking. As you know, yeah. I have trouble keeping my mouth shut. So. <laughs> well, we have 4,000 applicants, I think, originally. <laughs> okay. Um, do I'll take a motion? Uh, motion to accept. I second. No Did you second? I second. Did I Wow, that was quick. Sometimes. Any discussion? <laughs> okay, we have a motion made and seconded for Emily Martin as the animal control officer. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Congratulations. Congratulations. We hope Good. never. Thank we, you. We hope never to see you. <laughs> <laughs> um. But you know that's one of the, the animal control is kind of like one of those jobs that you never know about it until you need it. Correct. And very it, true. It's a very yep. thankless position. I mean, a lot of people who go into this type of, of position, uh, they don't do it for the money. They do it for the love of the animals and their hearts in the right place. Uh, and they have to be strong-willed and opinionated to a point, especially when dealing with people like myself or dealing with people in the public who are you know, supporters of animals, and they, they want to make sure that they're, the animal is going to be represented well, and having an animal control officer whose passion is there will really uh, assist us in that. 
Yeah, sometimes people forget that it works under the direction of the uh, chief. Uh, yes, in this town, it's the uh, direction of the police department. Uh, I know some other towns used to do it under the Board of Health. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, we're, we're there 24 seven, and it's easy enough to get a hold of somebody so we can reach out to uh, the ACO and, and, and have a good relationship with them. Right, and I, 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 and I think it's worked out well for us because of that, there is a good relationship, so. Yeah, no, we, we've, we've had, uh, prior to me coming here, we've had a positive relationship. We've continued with that. Uh, and we want to we want to continue with that even with the new position, and uh, we're hoping that you know Emmy can bring a, a new uh, fresh uh, 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 face to the position and be able to uh, return phone calls and, and discuss with anybody uh, any questions they may have, any concerns, because uh, in the past couple of months it's basically just been the officers who've had to respond, and you know we're not um, animal control officers, uh, so we're just trying to do it on the fly. So. Well, the Emmy will be able to pick up, uh, pick up the position and run with it. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Chief, you have anything else? I uh, just want to let the board know that we uh, we were approved for another uh, traffic safety grant. So there have been some um, uh, officers out and about, uh, you know, handling some of the traffic safety since last year. You know, the officers do uh, their best on responding to some of the areas that we've had complaints. Uh, but uh, with this grant that we received last year, uh, we really were able to uh, hone in on some of the, the choke points on 47 and on 116, uh, reaching out to some of the other uh, substitutes off of that. This grant is going to be similar to that. We'll have five different campaigns. I'm sure you've seen and heard the, the commercials, you know, you drink and drive, you lose, you know, the whole seatbelt. Uh, 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 to put your phone down, paying attention to the road, things of that nature. Uh, so we're going to be doing that again, five different campaigns. What's different about this grant this year is we've also incorporated a pedestrian and bicycle safety and enforcement. So uh, not only will we be taking part in the motor vehicle traffic enforcement, we'll also uh, work on education uh, for bicyclists, uh, making sure pedestrians are, are getting their uh, uh, observation in the crosswalk and people aren't running through there. Uh, and we're also partnering with the Sunderland Elementary School, where we're going to try to work with them on, on forwarding over some helmets for the kids, because uh, they enjoy their uh, bike and uh, walk and roll, or bike and roll to school, I think they call it. Um, um, the next one, I think, is this Thursday, Thursday morning. So those of you who are driving to work Thursday, please be extra uh, uh, more cautious than, than you normally are, because there's going to be more kids on the road uh, going to the elementary school. So. We'll hopefully partner with them more and be able to get them more materials. But I just want to make sure I told the board about that. Chief, did you want to mention anything about the First Responder Safety Festival? Thank you. For yeah, that's right. Um, so we have been uh, been working diligently uh, with uh, a lot of neighboring agencies, the state police uh, as well. Um, uh, Officer Ben Peters has uh, been the uh, uh, person on the front lines for the Sunderland Police, handling and working with organizing with different vendors, different uh, uh, other police departments in the area, and uh, Trooper Brown out of the state police, he works with the community policing aspect of it. So uh, we're expecting to be fun-filled, uh, jam-packed, it's supposed to be everything. We have a lot of different people coming. Uh, I'm not, I don't need to upsell it because they've done a great job trying to show everything that's been going on. Um, they, are, they are hoping to have, you know, weather permitting and um, uh, other uh, uh, emergencies notwithstanding, they're hoping to have uh, an appearance of a hel helicopter and some canines uh, and then other various uh, first responder tools. So it would be, be a great day to, to come on out with the family and take a look. Thank you. Okay. And that's at the elementary school oh, on the yeah, 8th? Yeah, it's the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> So you can see it on the uh, town website. You can see it on the Sunderland Facebook page and the Twitter, Twitter account. Uh, so it's going to be October um, October 8th. 8th, yes, because there's two events going on, I'm thinking of. So October 8th is the uh, Friday, and uh, uh, it'll be at the Sunderland Elementary School. So take a look at the social media sites and uh, the town's website to, to get more info. Right. I see. You see you're going to have comfort dogs, huh, Chief? Uh, they're supposed to have a comfort dog there, yeah. Um, uh, I can't remember which department they partnered with, but I know they were working with a couple of them, so it would be nice to have. Good. Yeah. Excellent. 
in the woods, more than welcome to come out and uh, to take a peek and see what's going on. Can we fly the helicopter? Uh, I can say sure, but it doesn't matter what I say. It's yeah. not my bird. Uh, <laughs> we don't have it in the Crystal, you ever fly a helicopter before? I've been in them. I've never. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always the first time. <laughs> yeah, great. There you go. It's fun. I'm sure they'll let you take a take yeah. spin at it. There you yeah. Go. No, I've been in the Lifestar ones and stuff back when I was a kid. No, we Okay. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Okay, next up on the agenda is the uh, one day liquor license for Mike's Maze. David, are you uh, coming up? Hi, David. So we have an application from the name of the applicant, David Wisman, address for 23 South Main Street uh, for October 1st with a rain date of October 2nd. So this is only a one day permit that we're looking, but we do have a rain date in case. There, right. there are two in that file. There's also 10th and 8th, is that right? I think David? the 8th, right? First, the first and the eighth, yeah. yeah, and then I will have another round. I will probably be submitting to you guys for a, a future, a future meeting um, for the final three. It's always pulling teeth to try and get the brewers to submit um, their insurance certificates. So um, I'm going to be support for submitting those again soon. So David, I, I I see you have there's two app. I see two applications in for the first and the eighth, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. That's it, yep. Okay, that's okay. So the, I'm going through the first one is uh, October 1st with the rain date of October 2nd, uh, 6 to 9 p.m. Yep. Right? Um, description of the event is a beer maze. That would be interesting. Um, so the cornfield behind... Uh, 23 South Main Street. That's we want to take them both at the same time. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so that's on the that's first right. one. The second one is for October 8th, with a rain date of October 9th. Again, uh, David Wishman, 23 South Main Street. Um, and again, is behind the. It's in the cornfield behind the maze. So uh, Jeff, did you? Send out uh, notifications to all the departments, and you had response. Yes. Yep. Everybody responded that they had no no concerns with e either application. Okay, David, you want to fill us in and then actually promote your event? Sure. Yeah. So um, these are our beer mazes, which we took a year off last year, but um, we've been doing them since I think 2017. Um, we basically have or invite six different breweries out to the maze. Um, they set up stations out in our cornfield and then guests uh, come and get to try and track down the brewers inside the cornfield and um, get uh, beer samples at each station uh, when they find the different breweries. Um, it's been a very popular event. People always seem to have a blast with it. Um, and yeah, it's been a, been a fun event that we're doing every Friday. Um, in October this year. Good. Any questions? No. Oh, okay. Pretty. So we and we have a sign s sign off by all our town departments per our, per our procedures. We do. Okay. I entertain a motion. Uh, motion. I second it. Okay. Motion made and seconded to grant Dave David Wisman Mike's Mays two one day liquor licenses. October 1st with a rain date of October 2nd and again October 8th with a rain date of October 9th each one uh, is a standalone one-day liquor license all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye three zero please thank you David thank you guys hope, Thanks. hope you have a great night <clears throat> Thank you. Um, select board designation to Franklin County Technical School. Oh, the select board appointment to Union 38 negotiating team. Yes. Um, so is this Frontier? 
This is Frontier. Okay. David? Crystal? Any interest? Uh, let's see. Is, is the regular Union 38 one coming up soon? Or I think from that one? This is. What's the irregular? Um, I thought this was the elementary school one, because I thought we were due for that one, but that's the one I've been doing usually. Was that the? I've been doing the elementary school one. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't remember, because <clears throat> I thought we were due. Um, I, I got the letter here. Here, it, yeah. It says the Union 38 School Committee. It was from Frontier. Um, I think this is Union 38. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not the... It's not it Frontier. Say, yeah, Conway, Deerfield. Center. That's what I thought, yeah. 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 I mean, I've been doing that one, so I might as well take that. There's something to be said about continuity. There is. Yep. Is that you, want, you want to fight him for that one? Nope. You can get the Frontier right. one when it comes up. There you go. Right. <laughs> so, um, I'll, I'll take a motion one. to appoint Dave Pierce to the Union 38 School Committee Teachers Association contract negotiation team as son old representative. I second. Okay, motion made by Tom, seconded by Crystal of appointment of David Pierce. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have up next is we have the school board designation to Franklin County Tech. Yeah, I got a confusing email. The letter we received seemed to indicate that there was a meeting where um, select board chairs would send a designation or go themselves to select from among themselves one representative to represent the municipalities. Mm -hmm. And then I got an email today saying the negotiations are on that date and communities have already said that they have people who are interested and will let you know if you are the representative so I, I asked for clarification I haven't gotten it back but in case the meeting was what the letter said it was supposed to be um, we may well have a designation a person to represent the town and choose the negotiating designee for the municipality. Well we had a conversation about this before. We did. So I told you how it usually works out. Yes. And, and, and just so you know in the years pa way back um, nobody wanted to do it. Um, so our board nominated Scott because Scott missed a meeting and <laughs> no one else showed up. So don't miss a meeting, Crystal. We'll nominate you for something. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, just like your other groups that you belong to, huh? Okay. Same thing. Never miss a meeting. Exactly. exactly. Um, but I, but of late, there have been two particular towns that always seem to be wanting to man those, that position. And, and that's probably been the last three or four runner, you know, going through. Still, um, just, just so you know, we're, we're, they're still supposed to have a meeting. And if, I will go to the meeting just, just to vote. I mean... So you can tell them that Sunderland has somebody that's ready to come to their meeting to vote because... Okay. All right? Yep. So if, unless one of David, you or Crystal want to go, but I would definitely take a trip up there to, the, to have that meeting. And I think we, sh you know, we need to be consistent, right? Yep. And if you're, if you're supposed to go up and, and follow, you have a procedure, then it's important that they follow the procedure. Yep. You would think. Okay. So we don't have to take, you're saying we don't have, well, we are taking, we are taking action. Yeah, I, that I mean, the, the I will go. I will go. If they have a thing, I will go. Was for the select board chair. So I don't think, I think if you wanted to designate another select board member or somebody else, then you would have to take action. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't even have to be a select, it doesn't have to be a chair. There's nothing that says in the, in the policy that it has to be a chair. It's a representative of the, <clears throat> the yeah. board from the town of Sunderland. So, I, okay. 
Okay, I'll do that. Okay, next up is the the rapid recovery plan. Are we on tap for that? We are. Perfect. Um, so I guess I could start by, by making introductions and providing a little bit of background, although I think over under is, is gonna provide some background as well. Um, uh, the town applied for and was awarded a rapid recovery planning grant to help the community um, recover from, from the pandemic and the public health emergency and all the uh, ways that businesses were affected while um, we had to wear masks and couldn't go out and things like that. Um, and we were fortunate um, that the, the state uh, paired us with Over Under, um, and we have representatives from Over Under here, um, Rami and Brett. I can't hear you, Rami, can you hear us? Oh, we got dropped. I don't know why this Oh, did this. we? One minute, please. Looks like it's connected. Yeah, but it's and we're still on. up on the monitor. We are, but we're not on the, the audio. phone. It's not a recent, huh? Sorry. Who was that that just came and closed the door? That was, um... Oh, now you asked me. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. Enter your participant ID followed by pound. Otherwise, just press pound to continue. You are in the meeting now. There are 11 participants in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. Hi, sorry about that. <laughs> Our phone got disconnected. Can everybody hear us now? Okay, yep. so um, I was just uh, saying that the rapid recovery plan grant uh, awarded by the state is to help the community recover from the pandemic. And we were paired with over under and they will introduce themselves and give you background of the process that they've gone through. Um, they've worked hand in hand with the village center committee because the focus area of the grant was the, the village center um, extending south to Mike's Maze in the Millstone and north, um, I believe, to Blue Heron area. Um, and then basically from the bridge to the Sugarloaf Frosty east and west. Um, so we're we're really excited. We've been working together since June, April, I don't know, <laughs> spring, spring, early summer, um, and they've come and presented uh, the preliminary recommendations a couple weeks ago, and back with sort of the final draft of the report, and then this report will um, help inform how how the community. Um, can recover from the pandemic and how we sort of are looking at the Village Center. Um, Lauren Starr is the chair of the Village Center Committee. Lauren, I don't know if you wanted to add any preliminary or introductory remarks. Well, I just wanted to say um, that that we have taken this opportunity to, um, you know, the grant is really to look at um, downtown throughout the Commonwealth and how they can recover from the pandemic. And it's been a real opportunity for us to look at some of the things that, you know, we have been thinking about. And I just, just wanted to acknowledge the committee members. Um, it has been kind of a fast-paced um, project, and we were very glad to get the grant and to work with Over Under. And they also brought in um, some specialty consultants in uh, zoning and transportation and um, uh, landscape and 
development. So we've been really fortunate to have the input. Um, and I also just wanted to acknowledge the work of the committee. Um, this has been a lot of meetings in the last few months. So um, Jessica Skibiski is my co-chair from the Store Commission, Rock Warner. Uh, is representing Pathways, Steve Gawa from Planning, um, Crystal from the Select Board, and then uh, Liz Dillon and I are the at-large members, and I'd like to really acknowledge everyone's work um, on this and turn it over to Over Under. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, my name is Rami el -Mahi. I'm here with my uh, colleague Brett Pearson tonight. Uh, thank you for having us. Um, I think uh, Jeff and um, Lauren did a great job of introducing sort of the, the project. Um, and what we'd like to do with you tonight is sort of take you through uh, the presentation. It will really um, sort of concentrate on the, the kind of the project recommendation. Next, Can everyone hear me all right? Very good. I always need to check. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll do a very brief introduction, kind of uh, brief key findings. Uh, we'll spend most of our time talking about the project recommendations and then uh, hold some time at the end um, for, your, for your questions and comments. Um, As Jeff mentioned, uh, Sunderland is one of 125 towns and cities across the Commonwealth that uh, have been a part of this um, rapid recovery planning program. Um, you can see us there in, in, in yellow, uh, and you can see yeah, it's really quite across the entire state, and uh, towns and cities, small and large. Next, please. Uh, most of you know us but uh, by now, but in, in case you don't, um, we're over under. We are uh, uh, an architecture uh, and design um, firm based in Boston. We do um, urban design and planning. We do uh, architecture. We do wayfinding and signage. Um, these are sort of three uh, projects we've done in the Commonwealth recently that sort of give you an idea of the breadth of the service we do. I, I should say, um, you know, we, we're proud of the things we can do, but we also know the things we don't do. So um, that's why we were uh, fortunate enough to have access to a couple of um, um, subject matter experts that the state sort of gave us uh, some time for uh, transportation consultants. Uh, an economic planner, um, uh, a sort of zoning uh, expert, and uh, then we also brought on uh, uh, the request of the town a, a landscape architect as well. Next, please. The schedule, yeah, yeah it's we uh, we actually did start in June in, in April, sorry, um, and we've been working sort of. Um, uh, very closely, uh, both with Jeff and the um, Village Center Committee, um, in that sort of early diagnostic phase, kind of just trying to find and analyze information, and sort of started to make project recommendations and get feedback. That was when we first met many of you during this, the first part of this presentation. And then for the last uh, you know, few weeks, we've been sort of Further coordinating with the village center committee and the subject matter experts and drafting the final plan, uh, which I will sort of will show you uh, in Moscow today. Next, please. Uh, Jeff very accurately described the, the the sort of the area of work. It, it is a downtown. It's your your downtown, the village center. We sort of extended it to make sure we got. Um, at, at, at a just request to make sure we got the most of them and Mike's made to the south. Um, and uh, I think we go along North Main up until the Buckle. Um, and really, it's 
the you know it's that intersection of um, uh, uh, 49 and uh, sorry Main Street and 1 116 that is so important, and that's sort of the crux of our the area of study. Next, please. I'll sort of go through this quickly. The key findings, you know, were based on communication uh, with you all. Um, the the, uh, we were in touch with the, the business community first through online surveys and then one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews with, with a handful of folks that we weren't able to get through the, the surveys. Um, we've been to town a number of times to take photographs, make sketches, and sort of uh, make use of online uh, data sets from you know, through GIS. Next week. I don't need to tell you um, that you've got some fantastic assets. Um, you know, Sunderland and the Village Center uh, kind of sit within this picturesque rural setting. Um, the sort of historic districts comprising North and South Main Street is uh, phenomenal. Um, uh, you have easy access to the Connecticut River, which is not always the case uh, along the river. Um, and you've got some good connectivity via private transportation, but also through public transportation um, uh, through 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 the downtown. And then finally, there's a sort of small town feel that I think um, attracts the most people who choose to live there. Yeah. Like all places, you're not perfect. Um, there, there are issues, there are challenges. Uh, the one we hear most often is that the village center feels like sort of a pass-through rather than a destination. It really doesn't, I mean, for historical reasons and where, the, where, the, you know, where one's being cut through a town, uh, you don't have that kind of quaint New England Main Street uh, commercial street view of the um, and um, that is in part because you've got these two state roads going through the heart of the center. You don't, you kind of lack a little bit of, of definition that, that other other towns uh, you might have. I have to say, 116 has also really hindered walkability. It's, it's made it um, difficult to to cross uh, in, in most places. Um, it, feels either unsafe or um, unwise to, to, to cross, and, and that, that has kind of, I think, made, been part of the reason why um, you don't see as many people walking the village center. There are also um, parcels that are either not being developed currently or sort of underdeveloped, which is to say they, they might be um, in the future better better used if the goal is to create a vibrancy in the town. And then what is a you know the small town feel that is um, attractive, it can also sometimes be a hindrance in that, you know, you know everybody and everybody knows you. Uh, next please. So all of these things we sort of gathered from our own observations, but also from listening to other people. Um, so I don't think any of these kind of surprise to you, but these are direct sort of quotes or paraphrasing from from uh, people we've spoken to over the last few months. There's a real sense of uh, a need to kind of emphasize and better define village identity, village center identity. Um, uh, there's been a sort of call for kind of developing a framework and vision for economic development. Uh, feel that better signage is needed. Um, that when we show examples of other places, that they be sort of right scale for Sunderland. Uh, we've heard more than once that sort of communication from town to uh, residents uh, should be better improved. And that sort of the you know the connections from to and from uh, Mount Toby and Mount Sugar uh, should be highlighted. And then finally, sort of build capacity for events uh, as we move forward. Volunteer-led events have the limitations. 
And we will sort of come back to all of these because they, they kind of in a way form the crux of, of the recommendations that we'll propose. Next, please. Just a minute to sort of step back and sort of before we talk about the recommendations and so on, what are we, why, why are we making these recommendations? Um, just said that this, and correctly, that this, this is, um, you know, this is the kind of state's first effort to think about the kind of post-pandemic recovery. And um, in that vein, some of the things that we talk about are direct results of issues that occurred during the, the pandemic that came. But some other pieces of this are, might be things that sort of predated the pandemic, but, but would certainly help uh, move us towards recovery. So there's sort of, in other words, some of the recommendations we're going to make are short-term and immediate, uh, and others are sort of medium and long-term, which is to say five plus, plus years. Um, but, but why are we doing all this? I think it's, it's all worth asking and worth articulating so that we understand. And as we see it in our in our kind of discussions with with um, with you, these are sort of the goals that, that we these are the things that we believe you hold important that we heard you hold important to support the businesses in the village center, to improve safety and walkability, um, to enhance the vibrancy of, of the village center, and to sort of calibrate the identity. I say not to create uh, from from scratch an identity, but to sort of take the identity that you have and, 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 and turn up the volume on the pieces that you um, want to emphasize. So we have several recommendations, but they kind of fall under these six categories. Um, provide support to businesses in need, use branding to solidify the identity, increase pedestrian and bike connectivity, target desired businesses, uh, utilize zoning to create desired development, and capitalize on events to draw residents and visitors. Next, please. You can see here on almost all of these, there's a A, B, C, etc. So we'll, we'll, what we'll do next is speak to each of those, one A, one B, etc. Um, and we'll sort of do it thusly. We'll, we'll sort of speak about the, the why of each um, issue and then a how. Um, and then at the end we'll open it up to questions um, and, and comments and, and try our best to, to, to answer them. Um, I'm going to ask Brett to um, take number one and two please. Sure. So the first is providing support to businesses in need and it takes a, a few different forms. Um, you know, from, from the government side, I think, you know, one of the issues we've heard um, communicated is, is the sort of lack of capacity at Town Hall. Um, and we think, you know, a simple way to um, start to address some of the issues that are happening is, is to simply hire a recovery fund coordinator who is responsible for um, distributing funds and, and running grant programs. Um, specifically for funds for businesses. Um, so, so that's sort of the first um, recommendation within this category. Uh, next is actually getting those funds for the, for the businesses that need them. I, I think it um, doesn't need to be mentioned that every single business, especially in, in the center, has been affected by pandemic, um, some more than others. So I think, um, you know, some of this is uh, for the recovery fund coordinator is to determine, you know, who is affected by how much, what is needed, um, and to sort of really get the help directly to these businesses in need. Um, and, and this is just sort of detailing some, some high level steps for, for how you do this and of course engaging the businesses, um, figuring out the funding sources that, that can be tapped. Um, businesses and then separately perhaps um, administering grant programs which which businesses can apply to for, for further assistance. 
Um, third recommendation in this category is, is to create a shared marketing program for the businesses that are in the business center. Um, you know, I think there are some great businesses already. It, it, they can sort of harness their, um, you know, collective um, connection into one program that starts to advertise to people what kind of businesses are there and, and, and sort of the wide range of things that are, that are offered. Um, again, because this area is, is often considered a pass-through, um, something like this can really draw attention um, to the center of town and get people to stop, especially um, if they're going to stop, visit one business, and maybe determine, oh, I can, I can also visit one or two other places while I'm here, while I'm already parked. Um, we think that could be a huge driver, obviously, for, for business growth, but um, also for activity, general activity and vibrancy in the village center. Um, this is an example, which some of you may or may not have seen, um, very nearby in Amherst. Um, you know, there's a sort of collective branding that's, that's positive and um, aspirational um, that sort of connects all of these places together. So the, the sort of high level process for doing this would be to hire a firm, a graphic design firm, um, start to engage these businesses, especially the ones that want to participate, but also the ones that may not, and, and um, maybe con some convincing into how beneficial this would be for them. But um, starting to brainstorm a message. So for, for Amherst, it's very simply, I Amherst. Um, and that's something that can be applied in, in a few different ways. Uh, and then there's a few different paths forward from this. Um, I think, first of all, you'd want a public database of these businesses and what they offer, what their hours are, um, all these things. Uh, some central place where people can visit um, online to, to find out. And then there's, there's sort of print and signage collateral that, that can be used um, to advertise these things. You see on the bottom right, you know, something as simple as just some sandwich boards, um, but the branding, or sort of the bright colors, um, this one in particular is, is, is um, also messaging about um, sort of COVID safety. So it can do many things at, at once. And then, you know, you want to make sure you're tracking the performance indicators so you know, um, so you have measurable results from, from this and hopefully there, there's an uptick in business. Um, and then, and then, you know, this is not the end of this program either. You should revisit it um, after six months to a year and determine its effectiveness and maybe what, what might need to change. There's just a few more images of that same project. And then, I believe this is the last one in this category of helping businesses, but creating a storefront improvement program. Um, you know, I, I, there are businesses that are downtown that there's not so much an issue of um, poor quality but there are some storefronts that, that maybe cater a bit more to cars and pedestrians so you know is there a way to improve these these storefronts that are more welcoming and maybe encourage um, pedestrian exploration um, so so how do you do that do you, we need to at first identify you know the funding available what kind of grants or kind of loans are available. Um, again, engaging businesses and property owners um, to get their buy-in, and then develop what we would call storefront design and guidelines. Um, these can be as uh, strict or as loose as you want. Um, often the goal is to, um, you know, make it so that these guidelines are not uh, prohibitive. They're 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 more useful for for storefronts to understand. You know, what are ways that would be um, that would be useful in, in improvement. Um, you can see this this example in action on the right. Um, some improvements could be just signs, awnings, accessibility improvements, lighting, painting, etc. Um, there's any number of areas that, that could be focused on. And then potentially creating an online application, so it's easy for, for people to, to apply to, to um, get funding for this kind of program. This is just a hypothetical example of um, 
one way in which you know we're taking keep trucker as an example it's, it's a great storefront and um, obviously there is a lot of parking in the front and it's far step back from uh, 116 so it, it definitely encourages more driving so is there a way to start to use um, perhaps a branded planter system just some additional landscape um, to sort of encourage again the walkability and 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 also just um, improve the quality of the storage um, This is an example from another town in Stoughton. Um, again, these guidelines could be very straightforward and are interconnected as part of a sort of system. Um, we understand there have been some previous branding efforts and some current. Um, it seems like they've been relatively piecemeal and not comprehensive, but we think that is something that can be built off of um, to to further sort of create a robust system um, for the village center. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to direct visitors to this area um, because there's no clear boundary, there's no clear um, there. Um, so the, the next step would be to create a comprehensive branding and signage. So, um, I'm sorry, this is the how. So, and engaging the businesses and stakeholders in the village center is, is key. Um, obviously, you want to pursue a direction that everyone feels is appropriate for the town of Sunderland and also for the village center specifically. Um, so it's, it's an opportunity to think about um, how the village center wants to project itself. Um, so, you know, the next, I guess, one of the steps that's not listed here is also having a designer uh, potentially lead the process. Um, but what happens often is um, a few options are, are proposed and there's uh, an opportunity to work up those, those consensus. And oftentimes in our experience um, doing branding, you know, it's not often just picking one approach and just going with that and saying we don't like the others. Sometimes it's taking a little bit from each or a little bit from one and two. Um, to make a new thing. So, you know, workshopping that and making sure it's something that everyone, that there's consensus about and that everyone can be proud of. And then, you know, testing the system in the form of some more temporary media, like, like posters, um, perhaps on the website, um, and then again, iterating. So gathering feedback and then revising and then, and then implementing uh, more permanently throughout the downtown. So we know that these are some existing signs and I think, yeah, proposed for the downtown. So this is, it's great that this is already happening. Um, I think um, hopefully it's, it's been successful. I think one thing that can be um, appended to this is, is also some idea of, of messaging, like what, not, not necessarily a slogan, but, but some sort of um, phrase or something that can be used in, in language on some of these signs as opposed to just um, some ones. This is just another example from, from a town. It's, it's in Alberta, Canada, but we like the comparison because it's, it's also an agricultural town. Um, but if it's, if you start to define, you know, what kind of images do you use, what kind of, what's the color palette, um, what, what are you trying to communicate, and then some idea of, of how signage works. On this. So I'm going to hand it back over to Rami to do a few more of these presentations. Yeah, I would just say a, a word about branding. It's a, <clears throat> often a, a word I'm uncomfortable using, but, but I mean, really I think it's another way of talking about identity um, and any successful effort to do this is something that is authentic and true to the place. Um, so whatever you side on this, you know, will only work if it's truly funded. Um, but, you know, we are fairly encouraged by the work we see, particularly the, the work uh, happening um, along with Riverside Park. And the branding there, I think, is a good beginning of that effort. I should also say, you know, um, with the expression to, uh, to a nail every problem, or to a hammer every problem with a nail, and so as, as Designers, uh, particularly wayfinding and graphic designers, obviously we see that signage is, is, is an issue 
and, and something that you could solve. Um, uh, and would go a long way to help create an identity for downtown. Um, but we also know that that is not kind of a silver bullet on its own, and it's not going to sort of magically transform um, uh, downtown uh, the village center into a bustling place just because you've got fantastic signage. Um, but it will start to do something important, and that is to start to signal to people to slow down as they're approaching this crucial intersection. Um, and that's where this effort went tied in um, with the next one, so an increased spike in pedestrian connectivity. Together, both the signage but also changes to the road will start to signal to vehicular uh, you know, people coming, drivers, that they're no longer in sort of open and that they ought to kind of slow down and look around. Um, next, please. <clears throat> so for this, we had the, the pleasure of working with Stantec, who are um, the folks in their transportation um, department are, they know, they know Massachusetts sort of mobility issues um, very, very well. Um, and we know from our very first meeting with um, uh, the Village uh, Center Committee that this, this kind of crucial intersection is the crux of, of many of your issues. We understand that there has been, um, well, well why, why is it? Because traffic volumes uh, have been high historically, uh, and obviously things have been a little off uh, normal for the last 18, 19 months, uh, but speeding has increased as, as a result uh, of the lower traffic volumes. And um, as a pedestrian, it's not easy to walk um, parts of 116. There are areas where the sidewalk just disappears altogether, uh, places where the sidewalk is far too close for the, to the road for people to feel safe walking. And we understand that uh, one of the suggestions that has been made and MassDOT has been and investigated, at least in a preliminary fashion, is um, a roundabout at, at, at this main intersection. Next, please. Um, we don't know about the roundabout. The roundabout to us and to Stantec feels um, an odd choice for the center of town. Um, when you have, it's, it's unusual to have a, a roundabout somewhere where you want people to sort of walk from one side to, to the other. Um, in, in talking to Stantec, they said they made the interesting observation that you know oftentimes a, you might have a roundabout as a gateway announcing a, a arrival um, rather than at the intersection <coughs> at, at the at the heart of the, the downtown. But according to Stantec, and, I, and, I, and we've come to uh, agree with them, that the problem is not the intersection itself. The problem is that traffic is not slowing down and it's getting to the intersection. So how do you use those cues, both the signage and changes to the road, to get people to think that they, to understand that they need to slow down before they arrive um, at, at, at the point of the market, if that's where you as a town decide to go. Stantec and, and we uh, believe that the best place to start is um, with a study that allows you to do a series of temporary designs first. Um, why temporary designs first? Um, a couple of really good reasons. It's a lot cheaper <laughs> than anything permanent. It can be done sometimes, as you're seeing here, with a little bit of paint. Um, and it allows people to acclimatize to a change while understanding that if you all just hate it, it can go away quite easily. Um, so for those reasons, um, the temporary <coughs> traffic calming strategies seem to be a, first, a good first step. Next. There are many uh, places where we could 
um, start to implement these, and you'll see here, this is sort of a, a bird's eye view of the uh, study area, and we sort of called out a series of places where we think um, some of these traffic, temporary traffic calming measures could be taken in, into account. It could be, for example, along the bridge. Um, the, the bridge is a fantastic place to see um, the, the river, obviously, but also to sort of move from um, in and out of uh, Sunderland. Um, but it's, it's a, you know, there's only a sidewalk on one side. It's not particularly conducive to bicyclists and pedestrians in the So, uh, Looks like we lost. Oh. Yeah, audio we froze. Oh, we lost his audio. Um, is that? Did we get kicked off again? He's talking. Yeah. Yeah. Are we're we still connected on? here. Robbie, can you hear us? Sorry, our our phone disconnected again. If you can hear us. So, <laughs> sorry, I'll call back. Just a sec. We're still on, I think. I mean, I can see it, but it, it just keeps like, it keeps shitting us off. Yeah. Almost have it memorized. <laughs> Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID. Looks like our own little version of the Bridge of Flowers there, huh? You entered 612280. This meeting ID does not exist. Please re-enter your meeting ID. Enter your participants. You are in the meeting now. There are 10 participants in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. You have been added to the waiting room. You cannot talk or listen until the host admits you to the meeting. Jeff, where did we lose you? Uh, previous slide. Previous. <laughs> yep, Here. there you go. Yep. Yep. Oh, uh... I um, let's see. we um, we believe that with a little bit of paint and uh, some extra attention, you might be able to create more of a buffer zone uh, along the bridge that would allow a little more space for uh, pedestrians and bicyclists to move and feel safe uh, uh, while while using the bridge. It would also narrow the roadway slightly, not too unsafe. Width. This is certainly within the kind of allowable uh, width for for uh, vehicles, but it would serve as one of many strategies to slow traffic down a little bit. That's what's coming into town. Um, so you go from something that looks like this, perhaps, where it's a fairly narrow sidewalk on only one side, to this where you sort of extend, a, kind of create a bit of a buffer zone uh, between the, um, the cars and the vehicles and the, and the, and the bicycles. Next, um, you know, things, simple things like adding new crosswalks. Uh, maybe those crosswalks have, um, you know, the sort of the crossing light at, at will, which is if you have a, you, 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 you a pedestrian and after a few moments, it, it kind of flashes and alerts any any cars coming in any direction that someone is and, that, and they'll slow down. It's not a red light, it's a, it's a, it's a flashing light, if you will. And then creating some, you know, just a, a, a median strip uh, to the center of the condition. Next, please. I think at, at this crucial intersection, let's start by kind of expanding slightly the the sidewalks with, with paint um, and sort of branding, if you will, creating new crosswalks that are uh, part and parcel of the identity of the village center. Next week. 
So here you have the, 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 this intersection of this, of this bay, with a little bit of paint. We've taken the colors from the Riverside branding effort and suggesting perhaps a little bit more color might get people to pay a little bit more attention um, to the suggestions that have come through there and perhaps some sort of grade through the box itself. Next. Uh, a potential crossing at North Star. And I should say, um, since producing these recommendations, we've come to understand that uh, through Jeff and Lauren that um, in their discussions with MassDOT that they are in fact considering crossing the right. two places already. So that's, that's a good sign. Next. Next. Um, and I, I would just say, you know, in, in each of these, Places you sort of have a kind of a different, slightly different um, character. You've got the civic and recreational character along School Street. You've got what we call manufacturing and, and, and services uh, near tea trekker and uh, former tea trekker in the bank. Uh, the uh, the food and beverage uh, area by Wild Roots and, and uh, Billy's Beer and Spirits. Um, the Bridgeside Grill, just across from that. Um, across from the Sugarloaf Brothy is, is, is North Star and also the school. And then finally, down a little bit further south is, the, is my uh, maze and millstone. Next. In each of these areas, we can start to think of a very simple but perhaps effective um, strategy that might include kind of the strategic placement of planters that would allow some of these areas to be both kind of, you know, branded with the identity, but also create space for um, folks to congregate. So this, for example, might be uh, extra seating uh, in front of the water. Next, next please. And then once these uh, temporary measures have been tested, um, it's, uh, you know, and either sort of embraced or, and or re rejected by, by, the, by the town, it would be time to um, look at things in a, in a more permanent way. And these, you know, these would have to occur uh, with sort of further study, measurement of what was successful and what wasn't successful, uh, are there more people on the streets? Has business um, have has revenue gone up for the businesses as a result? Uh, have um, uh, traffic speeds gone down? Um, have uh, accidents gone down, etc.? These are all measurable um, ways of determining what's next. We're not showing anything particularly permanent because we feel strongly that those things sort of have to come about through, um, you know, a trial uh, and experiment. But here are, for example, a series of more permanent type crossings, um, whether they're raised crossings. And I know um, that's an issue sometimes with snow, but certainly they've been dealt with in other places, uh, or sort of brick you know, br br brick replacing the stone, for example, to sort of give it a kind of... I think equally important is to think about how um, the, the, um, the village center itself is connected to um, the surrounding natural resources and, and trails. So, um, for example, you know, the, the, the makes sense to sort of clearly sign directions for Mount Toby and Mount Shirley, uh, or perhaps to create what we're calling a village center loop uh, by connecting existing paths. You can go to the next slide. So you can create almost a figure eight now through existing uh, loops. That, and these loops, for the most part, um, would allow uh, folks to safely walk and or bike uh, through downtown. The one missing link is the dotted bit that you see uh, from the elementary school across 116 and through um, what is uh, a wetland. Um, 
if you are able to sort of create a boardwalk or something like that through that space, you would be able to finish this loop um, soon. And by our calculations, this is over a one and a half mile trail. A more ambitious thing to consider in the future, perhaps, is a loop that kind of runs around the perimeter of the, uh, the village center. Um, and the sort of the big, the big uh, piece of this that is, well, two, two, two pieces don't exist currently. Uh, one is the connection from the bridge uh, to the Riverside Cemetery, and that would really only occur with the um, acquiescence and approval of uh, four or five um, uh, farm, farm owners of the, the farms along, along the river. Uh, and the other piece would be sort of some connection through um, the area behind the bank and the blue hair, which we believe would be possible in the future. So we know that this one may not happen tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and we know that um, there are some obstacles to, to it, but we also think this is a fantastic um, idea. And I can say that because we're not the first one to think of it. Um, but and would require you know some some serious talks with uh, some landowners who may or may not be willing to, to work it, but it, it seems like an idea that would be of benefit to the entire uh, town. Next, our fourth recommendation is to sort of target desired businesses. You have. Um, uh, some wonderful businesses uh, in, in town. And I would say it's a diverse range of businesses that are from sort of, I mean, if you just look at the kind of food and beverage, for example, you've got you know, everyday eateries, everything um, from, from everyday eateries to sort of uh, fine dining um, in, a, in a very in a couple of blocks radius. Um, so the question really is, uh, what sort of businesses do you want to bring in to sort of help complement what you have already? So uh, next, please. Our uh, economic development consultant um, believes this is developing a tenant recruitment and retention plan is key. Um, and I, you know, the, the pandemic has started existing uh, businesses in the village center, just like the businesses. Uh, elsewhere have been uh, affected. Um, and it's also discouraged new businesses from starting, period, uh, not just in Sunderland for fear of failure, uh, et cetera. So, uh, you know, the moving forward, I think if you want to identify the sorts of businesses you're interested in having, and then identifying um, what the existing barriers might be to, to getting those businesses uh, in Sunderland, it will go a long way to sort of rounding out the kinds of businesses that you have. Next, please. Uh, how do you do this? To identify the kind of businesses that you want through stakeholder outreach, that is, uh, talking with uh, folks in, in town. Um, you conduct a market study to sort of match your aspirations with what is likely for, for a town of your size. You review the existing zoning, permitting, and licensing processes. Um, to sort of identify if there are any barriers and what can be done about that. And then to design a, 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 a tenant recruitment and retention program that kind of matches to your realities, uh, your aspirations with the market reality. Next. Then related to that is sort of uh, kind of utilizing zoning to create desired development. Next, please. And there's sort of two speeds, I suppose, of which you kind of could, could, could examine uh, your bylaws. Um, one is to make sure that outdoor dining and retail are easier on a permanent basis. But one of the few things that I think we've, that we've learned as a result of the, the last uh, you know, 18 months has been that um, outdoor dining is uh, successful. Uh, people like it, uh, and it, it, it can work. Uh, a lot of places made temporary provisions to allow for outdoor uh, dining to, to happen, 
and there is a desire now for a lot of that outdoor dining to remain outdoor, uh, or to make it easy for folks to to have outdoor dining, and I should, I should say also just other kinds of retail, um, to help support businesses as they recover. Um, but also, I would say, to um, they lend an air uh, a vibrancy to the public realm that is really a, a, a benefit to, 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 to any uh, business district. Um, next, please. So the, the first of these, so uh, yeah, review, the second, I talked about two speeds, and then I got lost on the first speed, which was dining and retail zoning changes. But the second phase is the um, kind of zoning to encourage further development. So, in, in here we're calling it density, but really what we mean is sort of, uh, you know, uh, best use of parcels that, that might be um, underdeveloped at the moment. Next, please. We've sort of kind of thought about, you know, how to tackle this idea that Sunderland, Sunderland Village Center lacks a cohesive identity because of, of 116 and the presence of 116. Um, and while Main Street is a beautiful uh, uh, street and has a, a, a lovely um, kind of historic presence, it's a residential street, not a commercial street. So it doesn't kind of participate in the kind of downtown business feel, if you will, uh, of Sunderland. So how, you know, perhaps rather than trying to kind of bang our heads against the wall, sort of accept the reality of 116, slow down the traffic, as we've discussed, and, and kind of make it safer and, 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 uh, and more pedestrian and bike oriented and only car oriented, but also accept the reality that you have what is essentially several clusters in your in your village center, which is say, you know, the civic and recreational cluster that I referred to earlier with the town hall and the library, maybe sort of services sector uh, emerging uh, on, on the northeast quadrant. Uh, some sort of food and beverage on both the southern quadrants there, and then that education on the quadrant that, that we alluded to earlier, and then finally some sort of agricultural quadrant with Millstone and, and uh, next So perhaps what we could do is we sort of move forward in our development of, of the town, maybe it makes sense to, and how can we sort of help turn up the volume of, of the character of each of these clusters? Um, in their own way. So how do we make, you know, the food and beverage area so more food and beverage and um, et cetera, um, rather than try to kind of unite all six of these areas under a single banner that, that is. Next, please. Uh, as, as one way you, you could do this, and, and it's at a very different scale, um, both in terms of geography, but also uh, time, is to sort of capitalize on events uh, that draw both residents and, and visitors. Next, please. Um, we believe that one of the first things you can do to help uh, create the reason that people would want to come downtown in the first place, or, or that visitors would want to come into downtown Sunderland um, is to sort of create events that, that draw people. Um, at the moment, um, we probably need to streamline the, the permitting for outdoor activation. Um, those things sort of lack the, that activation um, at the moment. I know in the past there have been events that have taken place um, downtown. Um, and from what we understand, these occur for a few years and are successful. And because they're volunteer based, they peter out um, after after a few years if that person loses interest or moves on. Um, so that's that's one way. 
I think one of the first things we want to do is sort of kind of identify locations and the kind of character of, of all the accessible public and private outdoor spaces. Um, engage with businesses that have activated or are interested in that activating with outdoor spaces. Uh, we saw, you know, we, um, Mike's Maze, I think, is probably your most successful event. Um, it is a, by all accounts, a fantastic event. Um, but it also draws people to that to Mike's Maze, and they never make the three-minute walk uh, further up the street to to something uh, in in the, in the center of town. Um, so I think that's uh, you know um, it could be that there are things that, that happen along around the same time or ways to draw on that uh, foot traffic to bring people a little further further uh, into downtown. Um, and then I think in, engage with organizations and individuals that have held, have done these public events in the past, uh, or shown interest uh, in doing uh, such things. And um, finally, review and streamline the processes for outdoor dining and outdoor event permit. Next, please. We have talked about uh, the, the why. Um, you know. We, 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 we believe and we've heard that you know, sort of activation is, is a must. Um, we, we know that activation for other places is a must to sort of, as a draw for, to get uh, visitors and residents alike. Um, things like farmers markets are often a good, good idea. Um, uh, there aren't a whole lot of outdoor events uh, in, the, in the village center. Next please. Not too far away, there are some very successful um, ones here, uh, like the Moonlight Magic in, in Sherman Falls. Uh, on the other side of the state, the Winter Bridge pop-up at Fall River. <coughs> but there are all sorts of uh, other ones as well. Next, please. In terms of location, uh, the Riverside Park seems like an obvious place. Uh, we know that events are held in the library courtyard. Um, South Main Street itself so is, is an interesting location if there could be uh, a way to think of linear events. Uh, and Mike's Maze, as I mentioned, is, is happens um, to be the most successful event location in, in, the, in the study area. Next, please. You don't have to be incredibly um, high investment on the part of the, the town. Um, the corner spot in Ashland is a, is a great example of a sort of small town uh, transformation of a public space where they sort of took over part of a public park and through a series of different kind of um, small pieces of, of public infrastructure, so uh, you, know, you can see that uh, uh, trellis uh, on, 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 on the, on the concrete uh, slab where concerts are held uh, in the upper right, and it shows up again in the lower right. Um, you know, a, a, a sort of giant checkers board is unfurled uh, on game night, and the, the space is sort of well identified. And, and, and made uh, um, graphically a place to graphically down. Next, please. Uh, a, a slightly larger, but you know, it's really just a, a set of concrete steps and um, a, a, a gazebo that allow, kind of create a center in Waltham around which people gather for, for events, big and small. Next, please. Um, the last time we met with the village um, um, center committee, so just at the end of the meeting, there was this interesting discussion about uh, a race uh, from um, uh, Mount Toby to Sugarloaf, um, going through the village center. Um, you know, just not not too far. There's a 5.5 .5 mile race at the Montague uh, where. You know, once a year, the streets of downtown are closed for for one. And these kind of temporary events uh, that transform the way we use 
downtown. Seeming silly, perhaps, but they really um, can be powerful ways of understanding um, the possibilities of change. And they get people to come to uh, and partake in, in activities and in locations that they might not otherwise do. So that wraps up our um, our, our presentation. We um, enjoyed working with you. We don't believe we have all the answers. We we think that in fact our job is not to create a kind of final set of answers for um, for Sunderland, but rather to um, start uh, the town thinking about the ways in which it can begin to plan um, The state believes, and I believe rightly, that there's um, an appetite and Oh, did we lose him again? Hey, Rami, sorry, we, we lost you again on the phone. Just a second. Is there a time limit? Because it seems like I've been like, watching it. It seems like every half hour it cuts uh, the audio. I mean, the, the second time I plugged in the... Uh, our participant ID and it still still yeah didn't do it so I don't know because it's on the phone and not in the internet yeah that could be because it might be a, it like a, I mean other people have called in and not had an issue it shouldn't be a problem but. I mean nobody else is having to call back in right welcome to Zoom. Enter your participant ID followed by pound. You are in the meeting now. There are 10 oh, participants in the meeting. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. You have been added to the waiting room. You cannot talk or listen until the host admits you to the meeting. Um, I think we're back. Okay, can, can you hear Yes. Me yep. Where did, uh, where did we move you? Just at the Q and A panel, right yep, there. Yep, just right there. there um, I, I think I believe I was saying uh, that we sort of come to understand our job as helping you, you know, offering a, a, a list of, of recommendations and then helping you think through what you know your priorities are moving forward um, we as i said we we um as we understand it this the state is quite bullish about uh, funds coming through uh, from the federal government and um, obviously they're not all coming to sunderland but uh there certainly uh, is is uh, a, a an idea that at least some will be available for you, and the question really is what you know. What are the things you wish to move forward with, um, both in the short term and the long term? Some of these are very low pieces of food. Some will require many um, years to come to fruition, and it would be our recommendation that you sort of combine uh, to, to to do some things that. Uh, demonstrate both to um, the town, uh, but also to you know, future funding um, that you're serious about about certain things. So with that, I'll um, open it up for questions and comments. Thank you for your patience. I mean, does anyone from the public have questions first before? Can we um, stop the screen share so that if people want to come on, it's a little. I think the select board asked if there was anybody from the public that wanted to make any comments first. 
or questions? So, so in your in your uh, did did you have to consider moving the center of town to a new location? Not I, any I, well, I, I just I just said it because you're I, I, I was just you know our center of town um, is defined by the intersection of 116 and 47, but there may be better and and so we're kind of working with a pre-existing location that may be hard. I was just wondering if there may be different locations in town. That where you could actually get people to slow down to instead of just going through so, I I think I, I can answer that because we had to define the project area when we applied okay so it was a, a predefined area that over under um, had for them and it was based on, on business concentration and originally we had included um, the Dunkin Donuts and mm -hmm. you know the Sunderland Market and then the state came back and said it needs to be a contiguous area um, and they're just it, it was a little too sparse between the, the yeah. frosty in there that's and a big gap I, I, I would say to, to your to your question um, I, I guess I'm, I'm of the opinion and, and this is my opinion so it, 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 you anyone who's welcome to disagree but that it's not um you know i i don't think it's by any means uh, uh its current location is a disaster um i i don't i don't believe that at all i, I think that it, it's um it can be improved upon uh greatly um but some some of those things are things that wouldn't require, and I mean, the, the, the transportation, the long-term transportation is a big, big question, no doubt. But I would say um, some of these things are quite easy to do, and the, the, the long-term issue of slowing down traffic at that point are probably something you want to do regardless. Um, you know, it's just it's the safe, safe and thing for, you've got schools along that road, you've got this is, you know, you, 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 you don't want to prioritize vehicles at the expense of, of those other modes of transportation as you move forward. I, that would be my, my opinion. So I think, you're, I think your center is in the right place. <laughs> well, when, when I, one, one of the things I was looking at, you, you're, when you talked about, um, down by the school the the figure eight one of the things that would concern me is that you're you're bringing um, people walking alongside of 116 which is a 50 mile an hour zone right now um, and you're and and also they're walking into the elementary school so there be a lot of very young preschool kindergarten first grade second grade that would be walking next to the highway, which I would find not pretty concerning if I was a parent, and be drawing people to 116, which I, I think you definitely want to stay away from. So there are, um, and we didn't show any of these drawings, but there are, um, you know, I would argue that 50 miles an hour at that location is, is Probably too fast, and, and that that would you know I would I would suspect that you're, um, if you had a proper transportation study that they would concur um, that you you want to slow people down well before they reach the, the intersection. Um, the other the other thing is you, you also want to sort of create um, a a visual buffer zone, which is to say some, you know, planting and whatnot between pedestrians of, of any age and, and, um, and the car. So if you can get the cars to move a little slower, um, and you can make it clear to the, to the cars and the pedestrians that they're sharing that road, um, that will go a long way to um, 
dealing with with these with with your concerns. And, and these concerns are not um, they're not unique to this road in this place. These are always con concerns in any town or city, and and and, and they can be dealt with. Um, I would say to your um, point that some of the more interesting things that we've heard through this process um, were uh, that, in fact, to get the traffic to move more smoothly through the center of town, that slowing it might actually help that. And that also, and then you know, that's why I think this is a long process. And then slow, slowing that traffic may make this bad area on 116 kind of more appealing to businesses and to pedestrians. And it's um, one of the reasons we kind of pursued a conversation with DOT this week regarding the sidewalk extension um, and trying to make that a little more pedestrian friendly. It was, you know, even though it's a sidewalk project, it was at least on one side of the street quite close to the street. It does look like we might have had some success in getting some of that sidewalk pushed back a little further away with more of a buffer. So I think, you know, this is a long kind of process of a lot of things being interconnected. I think it's not, you know, suddenly creating a loop on 116 while the traffic is at 50 miles an hour and the sidewalk is too close to the road. I think it would take a lot, a lot more steps get to, you know, even if that's even possible, because it also means crossing the wetland and, and getting some other things accomplished. So, um, you know, to me, also to your point about where the center of town is, I think one of the interesting observations of this project has been this idea that our town is made up of these clusters and that, you know, it may be that they get developed as clusters rather than as a continuous sort of, um, you know, we might not become a continuous town like Amherst or Northampton is, but more of a, you know, little nodes. And so to some extent, I think we did move the Civic Center, right, is really on School Street. So that is a node off of it. But I think, you know, for businesses and for to get the traffic and the um, patrons, you're going to have to be on one of the ma more major roads to be more visible and, and I, I guess I, I will agree I agree with actually what you said Lauren makes a lot of sense if you look at Irving for instance Irving has two basic um, you have a civic quote-unquote a civic center it's more or less is kind of shifted over more towards Miller Falls now with the senior senior center the the library the elementary school um, they're they're looking at senior housing over there right now. I mean, and, and in the other locations down more down toward by the paper mill, the Irving paper mill, they, where they have the town hall, the fire department. So so the in in and I I was just thinking if and it's only because of the, what you talk about rezoning. If you happen to look at the Dunkin' Donuts, right? Now I know there's a that big area across the street from Dunkin' Donuts um, that you have the apartment surrounding it, but you have a very large open space. It's really protected right now, be, the way that it was cut to build. But you could you could you could potentially put something there to attract those people. So we, again, we do have a lot of residents that live full time in those apartments. You know, you could you could bring people into that area, and and, and start getting people to to stop. Because I, I agree with you, you, need people to stop, and by having more activity on that road, I think that's going to lend lend cars to start going slower. Because I don't, I know it's to get the state to lower the speed limit is going to be very very difficult. They don't like lowering speed limits. Um, but if we had if we had stuff built up. You had things going on in that area. Now you're making a longer commercial, if you want to call it commercial, or it, there are more people doing things and stopping. So st you, instead of just now, the only reason they stop is to stop at the few businesses there. But maybe if you could stop it to, if you had a band shell out there, I'm, I'm just saying, or you know, a lot of different things. A farmer's market, if you had a farmer's market there, some, something like that 
may 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 start slowing cars down. Okay, does anyone else have any comments? I just have a couple questions about you talk about streamlining the permitting process and stuff for outdoor activities. Do you have like examples of what it is that's making that difficult right now? Anecdotally, from uh, discussions that, that we've had with, with different people, um, the, uh, expressions of, sort of diff how, that it was not easy to uh, get access to the, the parking spots in, in front of their uh, establishment, for example, to, to, to use um, during um, the pandemic. But, you know, um, to do this properly, we would need to someone would need to kind of look at what's there, do a much more thorough kind of examination uh, with, of the, with the businesses who really want to do this, um, as well as what's on the, on the books and how long it takes to, to make that happen. And it, it might be that there aren't any impediments in the, the rules, so to speak, but it's more of just the the length of time that is required to, to make it happen. Okay. And then you talked about a crosswalk at Wild Roots. Wouldn't that just further complicate that intersection? I mean, there's already a crosswalk very close. Um, if you put one in front of Wild Roots, People coming off that bridge with poor vision of, you know, there is a little bit of a, you know, a rise there. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we, I mean, and by, I say, people who know much more about this than, that, than I do, uh, which is to say transportation planners believe now actually that, um, the sort of increase in crosswalks on a, on a road like 116 is actually to, is, is, is a good thing. Um, first of all, I would say that the bridge, the speed on the bridge is probably a, a little faster than it ought to be coming into a downtown. Um, you know, most, most downtowns, you're, you're looking at 30 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, and now some places are even doing 20, 20 miles an hour, just, just to put this in, in, in perspective. Um, and I'm, when I say m many places, I'm talking small, small towns and also large cities are, are looking to slow vehicular traffic down. I think, and, and I would say even Mass DOT is changing its tune. I, I know someone mentioned earlier that they don't like to slow down their speeds, and that has been true historically. Um, I think things are changing within <laughs> Mass DOT, and there is much more pressure from planners, from transportation planners, on them to, to slow speeds down. But in general, um, having a place where you can cross so you don't have to walk down to the intersection, whether it's exactly where we recommended or elsewhere would A, occur after a proper study has been done, so measuring traffic speeds, making recommendations as to what traffic speeds ought to be, et cetera. Um, and then the precise location would, would, would be um, uh, recommended and implemented. But um, in general, in general, having more crosswalks on a road like 116 in your downtown area is a benefit. Um, why? Uh, people might be coming in fast, or they might see the light and they see it turn yellow, and um, <laughs> our instinct often of the yellow light is to speed up. Um, if there are ways to signal to, to the driver that that's not an option, and a crosswalk is one of those things, then they're, they're going to slow down rather than speed up, definitely. To some extent, we're going to have a test of this because part of the DOT uh, sidewalk extension is, is as Rami mentioned, that there is, there is going to be a crosswalk at the um, school. 
near the frosty with a flashing beacon. Yeah. So I think we will see right there. Right. Well, that one makes, that. yeah, that makes sense yeah. to me because there is nowhere in that area to cross. So. No. Right. I'd be more concerned with not the yeah. bridge side, I mean, but I think the that's going to be an intersection side. To yeah. see if that Locking does reduce into, the speed you know, of traffic right. coming into town. And with the lights, you know. That that'd be my concern. You know, and then you back up into the intersection while people are trying to cut across. But I get the, I get the traffic calming principles of it. Oh, I get the traffic yeah. calming principles of it. I'm just thinking, really, from Wild Roots to the center of town, how many cars would you fit between those two crosswalks? Right, like three maybe. And something that's something already like that. backed up. Yeah. So I think the other thing to keep in mind is that the scope of this study is to sort of talk, is to sort of propose ideas for further study, not to really right. have firm plans that are implemented. That so, you know, I think, you know, whether a crosswalk walk at that particular location is actually, you know, where we wind up. I think what is being suggested is you may want to think about other crosswalks in this location and you know it's something worth looking at studying further rather than um mm -hmm. so yeah. I no no i think that's uh, thank you Lauren. I, I i should have made that clear that, that there's nothing that we're uh showing that is sort of you you absolutely need to do this but these are some based on sort of our understanding of, of your town our discussions with you and um, our experience elsewhere, here are a set of potential things you, will, you might want to think about. Looks like Peter's got a question there. Yeah, I, I wanted to say something that I really liked about what you presented, and that was the use of colors, uh, colored painting mm -hmm. on various things, marking, for example, crosswalks, uh, where you showed our uh, intersection in the middle of town and really there's not even a crosswalk marked and putting a yeah. crosswalk boldly in all these different colors struck me as fantastic and much more get so much attention and so I would hope that as they finish up the North Main Street project that they would try out some of these same things right there to try and again make sure that drivers notice the crosswalks and not just put your traditional white crosswalk that gets worn off in a few months and then people just don't notice. So, you know, I think there, and there are other ideas you had in terms of, of, you know, painting things and using colors. I hope we actually give them a try because you said it's a cheap way to find out whether we really like something or not. And thank you. I just want to state for the record that we did not pay Mr. Gagarin to make that comment. <laughs> So I guess my I, I do ride my bike along there a lot, and I appreciate anything that can be done to, to keep the traffic as slow and as safe as possible. So I guess my question would be, what are our next steps from here? So I think, um, and, and Rama, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the report is due to the state uh, by next Friday. Um, and the Village Center Committee, um, I, th I believe, already voted uh, on the, the recommendations in the plan to, to approve it. I don't think that the Select Board needs to take any action to endorse the plan. We already got the grant, so this is just sort of the product we um, that, that Over Under has produced. Um, one of the next steps already happened because it was due Friday, which yeah. is... Um, the state is prioritizing communities with rapid recovery plans for regional economic development organization grants. Okay. And so ours is the Western Massachusetts Economic Development Council out of Springfield. And um, we talked with the Village Center Committee about the priorities. They said, send us your top one to three priorities. There's couple million dollars statewide so keep that in mind when you're applying yes. and I think there are 130 or 150 rapid recovery communities um, may, maybe not quite that many maybe it's closer to a hundred I think it's 125 yeah. okay um, and 
So, but they said that it, they're prioritizing it. So if there's a good project um, in your community, well, actually, the Economic Development Organization said, we're just going to sum it up and ask for the total of everything. And Let's if we see. don't get the total of everything that, that the region wants, then we'll figure out how to make those decisions when we figure out, when we know how much we get. But we did ask for um, some funds to do the... Uh, branding development and some of the marketing materials um, at least create the concept and then we could look at at funding fabrication hopefully there's there'll be sufficient to do some amount of marketing um, we also talked about hiring a zoning consultant to look at what specifically in our zoning or permitting might be holding uh, or may, maybe frustrating businesses um, and then the third was to start funding a mobility study for the intersection and really trying to get a better understanding for ourselves of how, how fast are people going, how many pedestrians do we have crossing. Um, right, some actual like, useful data in that. Right, and then, and then some suggestions, hopefully, although I would imagine that that's a... Um, depending on the scope, that can get expensive quickly for those types of yeah. studies. Well, well, I was thinking like like crosswalk, painting some crosswalks. That could be a good low-hanging fruit that yes. is on the inexpensive side. Right. You know, that we could do and then, then, and that might help give us some data points, you know, afterwards. Yes. So, <laughs> hmm. we can certainly have conversations. Obviously, we don't own both roads of the intersection uh, so well that's one of the things that complicates it a little right bit. um but but we can certainly start having those conversations and make sure that there are no objections or if mass dot doesn't allow it they have a standard crosswalk then there's always the option um and again this is for discussion if the yeah. town wants to take over a section of 116 um, and be responsible for it then we can paint the cross rocks however we want. Really? Purple crosswalk crystal, what do you think? And, and yeah, by the way, uh, probably not. Just because this is the study area doesn't mean we couldn't implement it elsewhere in town as a trial, you know, maybe right. it's by the Dunkin' Donuts at that light, you do three and say, hey, do people like the way we painted this intersection with these colors? Just to, I mean, that's still 116, I guess, so. I see hands right. waving in the background. Oh. Oh, they lost the oh, volume again. lost the audio again. Ugh. It was all brilliant. <laughs> I can't hear that anyway. Uh, all right, give me the number. I can try doing it. Uh, thank you. It is uh, 929. Oh, well, maybe I can. The number you have dialed is not in service. Yeah, oh, up. come on. Please check the hang number up. and try your call again. No, the big thank one. Thank you. The big one. Yeah, and then again. 929. 205 6099 Welcome to Zoom. 612 Enter your meeting ID 780 253 Pound Getting shorter and shorter dude. Yeah, it is. Enter your participant ID followed by pound. pound. Otherwise you are in the meeting now. There are 10 participants in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. Hey. You have been added to the meeting. Have use. You cannot talk or listen until the host admits you to the meeting. I were back. That was a deep breath. That was a deep breath right there, Jeff. <laughs> oh, we just solved the Mideast peace crisis while we were off. So yeah, you guys know. caught that, right? <laughs> Excellent. Um, I... I, I, That's yeah. Right. Um, As we'll move on. Yeah, but I did. I did want to thank Over Under uh, for their work throughout this project. Um, Lauren mentioned numerous meetings with the Village Center Committee. Um, most, if not all, were after typical work hours. So you know, Over Under was really flexible and, and accommodating, and, and did come out here during the pandemic to see the town and. You know, I just uh, really appreciate it and wanted to, to say thank you because that, that was really great.
Josh, can I ask a quick question? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, over under, I am not sure who is the right person to answer this question, but one of the slides that you presented talked about hiring a recovery coordinator. Um, I'm wondering how many other towns you're working with in the Commonwealth and how many times you've made that recommendation. I'll wait. <laughs> um, uh, and we're working with one other, other town right now. Okay. Um, and um, we, uh, there are many ways to do it. Um, and if we talked, we didn't go into the kind of details with you tonight, but we talked about a couple of different permutations with Jeff and, and, uh, and Lauren and, and uh, the rest of the committee. But, um, you know, there could be something that's done regionally. Um, that could be something that is appended to um, someone, someone, you know, an, another position. I mean, it may not. Obviously, <laughs> one hopes at least that it's not a permanent position in the sense that we will come out of this uh, fully at, at one point. Um, but um, it's and and by the way, I should say in other states. This is a position that has been actively kind of part of money has been used to fund this this position. Um, so it's a way of bolstering capacity, even if it's on a temporary basis, um, in in um, particularly smaller towns that don't have a lot of capacity you know, uh, at the moment. That's really helpful. I'd love to talk with you more about that because uh, we've certainly been making the argument that. As more federal funds become available, and uh, Senator Cumberford and I have been talking about this, uh, the capacity issues that we face in the small towns it's become difficult. increasingly uh, more taxed. And uh, so the, the position that you've talked about this evening is interesting, uh, but I also am wondering if it's just easier to give a lot of our small towns some money to do what they need to do. And uh, and really accomplish what they what their priorities are. So those are the two things I'm trying to to get some more information on and certain feedback on from towns like Sunderland uh, and the other communities in the first So I welcome feedback on that and appreciate you bringing um, the idea of a, a coordinator position to the region to our attention tonight. I think you know, in having the capacity to spend the funds that were given is a huge stumbling block. So, so we, the town, Jeff's actually been in contact with some of the surrounding committees or communities to just do that coordination, you know, bringing somebody on to talk to them about for us, because we know that we'd be very difficult for us to do it by ourselves, like you just said. So we have been looking with other communities to see if we can partner with them. And now, Tom, the thing that's frustrating for me, of course, is that we have 170 rural communities across the Commonwealth, and communities like Sunderland, and, and thank you, Jeff, for bringing people together, are all trying to do what you're talking about. And so how many people are we paying to try to come together to apply for applications to get these funds, and might it be more time-saving for our communities and also provide some more flexibility for our towns to address the, the challenges that, that you identify by somehow providing funds directly to communities. So I, I'm, I'm throwing that out there tonight because we've, we've had a conversation about Sunderland, but certainly, um, it impacts a lot of small communities across the country. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely. We're we're very we're we're very lucky. Like, I want to send you the money, Tom. Huh? No, no, I, 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 I think Sorry. we're very. I think we're very lucky that that Sunderland, Whiteley, Deerfield, um, and our our towns really communicate a lot with one, and we work a lot of things because a lot of time. I mean, how how often how often do we partner with Hadley? Not not that often. I mean, we we did on the the Brown Reagan or Regan um, when when we uh, worked with with the uh, when we bought all that farmland, 
but very seldom do we work closely with Hadley. We're trying, um, but we, but we're we're just like I said, we're just fortunate that we have Frontier, and also that the 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 boards and the other communities that would involve Frontier communicate with one another. But you're right. I mean, we don't do a lot of work with Montague, um, so I, I I agree with you. Try trying to to maximize every dollar. And we also shouldn't be, and we've said it a lot also, is instead of just worrying about one community, we should be worrying about our region. It's just, just as important, so. So I, I apologize if Representative Blay introduced herself, but in case Rami and Brett don't know, this is our state representative and, and resident of Sunderland. Um, so that's her perspective and I, it's very valuable but that's um you know why she was asking about other communities <laughs> and things just to help <laughs> 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 yeah i just wanted to say so we, you know, the other, the other community that we're working with is sort of more or less your size. We recommended to, but they, they um, it much more strongly, frankly, because they um, are, their capacity is even lower at the moment than yours. Uh -huh. They sort of never bounce back. From but that's probably the, representative of a lot of our small communities. And it is, it is. I mean, and, and, you know, certainly I'm sure, uh, I can't speak on behalf of Sunderland or any other town, but I'm sure they would happily accept the money as is. Uh, the, the, the only uh, concern is um, that usually I've found <laughs> my limited experience is that money comes with paperwork. Um, and, and somebody's got to do all that. Yep. Someone's got to do all that paperwork. Yeah. Um, and you've already got a fairly taxed, um, you know, town hall. And mm -hmm. some they may need the help. Um, Somebody's here. Uh, that is a there is a point that's well taken, and I appreciate that. Excuse. Okay. That was it. Sorry, Jeff. Sorry. No. Nope. I, I just also wanted to thank the Village Center Committee, and there were late meetings, and, and they really put in a, a lot of work reviewing the initial drafts, uh, reviewing the surveys, helping with outreach to, to various businesses, um, and we're, we're, we're a huge help throughout this process, and I just wanted to, to recognize Lauren and Liz and, and Jessica and yep. the entire committee, Rock, um, I'm probably Steve. Schneider, who am I missing? Or I'm sure there's at least one or two. Crystal. We've had some turnover, but you know, Crystal, Steve Gawa, uh, some of these people are have rotated out, and Jimmy Hull, who was who was in earlier. So good. Alrighty. Any other comments? Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll all right. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Um, town administrator updates. Um, uh, only one, which I think is the the last time I believe the last time we met, we had the chair of the board of health who talked about a uh, mask mandate for the public buildings and an advisory for private indoor spaces last week um, based on the number of cases, the increased number of cases we were seeing in town, uh, the Board of Health amended the recommendation to a, a mask mandate for indoor places open to the public. Um, so any, any business that you walk into, common areas, public buildings, outdoors, you don't have to wear a mask, but indoors please do. And just to emphasize that, uh, at the meeting two weeks ago, I think the case count from the state was under five, and then the most recent two-week case count um, was about 22 yeah. in Sunderland. So um, stay vigilant. I mean, you know, I, I think it, it's not surprising the the population tends to swell at, you know, end of August, beginning of September, and um, I think we, we saw that 
last year a little bit with the case, cases rising, and so we're gonna we're keeping an eye on it. And I know the Board of Health is is tracking very closely the number of cases, um, but I just wanted to make folks aware. We did we put the sign out. I think we we tried to get the message out. I think there was a call that went out and um, information on the website. But uh, that that was the only thing that I had um, that hadn't been mentioned yet. Is there a threshold that they get below where they'll lift the mandate? Does it have to get below 10 cases, five cases, be on for two weeks without it? In, you know, Probably a combination we, of a low case load and Right, duration. but is there any type of... Not that they communicated as a okay. specific threshold. Um, yeah. I think they're just constantly monitoring, yeah. and as you know, it, it starts going down. I think they're going to start talking about yeah. when it when it's appropriate. All right. So there's nothing scheduled to revisit the mask mandate. It's just originally uh, the board of health said that they were going to revisit it in a month, which would yeah. be about October first, I think, or the end of okay. September. Um, but they said, that, you know, again, they're going to, they're going to continue to monitor it. Our board yeah. of health chair has access to the statewide system. So she's on it regularly and can call a meeting if it looks like things are headed in a better direction. Okay. Good. Good. Any select board updates? I got a building subcommittee meeting tomorrow. Good. Frontier. That's it. Okay. All right. Not hearing any. Uh, ADA letter of support for the uh, application? Yes. Um, so the applications that we discussed last time with the schools uh, for the elementary school early education playground were submitted. Um, and we got confirmation that they were submitted. So we wanted to get those in first and we were gathering there was a letter of support from the CPAC uh, committee at the schools we also got one from the CPA and so we're going to submit one from the select board too um, just to show the town support for, for the project and the applications good all right so uh, one more thing to mention is next Monday night um, we're going to have a open space and recreation plan update um, presented and that is going to require some ac uh, approval by the select board to submit to the state mm -hmm. um, and that will wrap up ooh, like I don't know tw 20, 20 months of work I think it started right Long around time. the time I started um, oh. and, and that committee that was formed has really been driving the effort along with um, the technical assistance from FERCOG so looking forward to having that presentation next week okay anything else hmm? crystal did it uh, i guess the last thing is just tax taxes are due friday so um the i the treasurer collector is planning on being here friday typically we're closed um but it, since tax bills are due she will be here so um, if, if you want to make her life easier, feel free to stop in a, a day or two early. <laughs> um, but just wanted to remind people that's real estate taxes, personal property taxes, uh, water taxes. Okay. And our next meeting is Monday, October 4th, 2021, 630 right here. Um, maybe we can get the, uh, chair of the board of health to give an update. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Entertain a motion. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn and seconded. Any discussion? Not hearing any discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Declares out at eight four zero three zero.